Coming up on this edition of Out of the Blue, a grassroots effort to build a better community that brings Murfreesboro and MTSU closer together. Learn how you can take part in the True Blue Community Initiative. MTSU's new Mechatronics program takes the university's engineering technology program to the next level. What is Mechatronics? Find out from MTSU's professors teaching in the next generation in this growing field of engineering. In this month's cover story, travel to Afghanistan with a soldier who walked the roads and villages of the war-torn country. See it through the eyes of a soldier who now sits in an MTSU classroom. Plus, the Blue Raiders kick off the 2013 football season with three wins in their first year of Conference USA. Can the Blue Raiders top last year's 8-4 and four record? That and more coming up in this edition of Out of the Blue. Hello and welcome to another edition of Out of the Blue. I'm Mike Browning. We're coming to you this month from inside Floyd Stadium, where the Blue Raiders are off to a 3-2 and two start in September. A Murfreesboro pastor is spearheading a grassroots drive to broaden support for MTSU athletics and academics. First Baptist Church pastor James McCarroll says he's lived in communities where the support is stronger and he wants to see Rutherford County bleed blue. McCarroll and President Sidney A. McPhee announced an initiative that will begin October 4th the Friday before homecoming with what's being called True Blue Friday. Big kick coming from the right hash. Here's the kick, it's up, and the kick by Cody Clark good. is good! When Cody Clark kicked a 40-yard field goal last Saturday to give Middle Tennessee a 17-15 victory over Memphis, there were nearly 24,000 fans at Floyd Stadium. But community leaders think fan support should be better. They announced a community-centered effort. We had a dialogue about how to get more of the community involved in the campus and how to get the university more present in the community. James McCarroll, pastor of First Baptist Church, agreed to spearhead the effort of getting community businesses, nonprofits, churches, and residents not only more involved in the life of the campus community, but seeing MTSU as an integral part of Rutherford County. I've witnessed other communities with similar sized universities that have developed deeper, more connected relationships with all segments of the population. And I believe that MTSU has that same potential for far more comprehensive engagement. For McCarroll and other community leaders, the initiative is about more than athletic support. It's about helping members of all segments of the community lead better lives. We have developed an initiative which will seek to develop a deeper relationship between the businesses and residents of Rutherford County and surrounding counties and the MTSU community. The initial team of leaders who organized the effort are calling it the True Blue Community Initiative. The goal is to connect to and impact the community, beginning with an annual event dubbed True Blue Friday on October 4th, the Friday before MTSU's homecoming. We're asking that all of Rutherford County its residents, its students, its employees, support MTSU by wearing blue. In putting together an initiative, this true blue community initiative that will make sure that people understand that Middle Tennessee State University pumps over a billion dollars a year in this economy. President McPhee wants to see MTSU do a better job of bringing total community involvement into the university community. Because the life, the growth, the development, the sustainability of this university depends on the community and likewise, we are intertwined. Leaders are hoping MTSU is something all members of the community can celebrate. During the month of September, MTSU has showcased a number of high-profiled scholars, writers, and songwriters. Dr. Thomas Segru addressed the topic race, inequality, and diversity in Obama's America as part of the 2013 Strickland Visiting Scholar Lecture Program. To look at Obama in terms of how he was educated, where he lived, what shaped his political vision, what reshaped it, uh, and how he emerged uh, to be 
uh, one of the most interesting and uh, uh, still um, not fully tested uh, presidents in uh, uh, modern America. Many Americans aren't familiar with the music and lyrics of British songwriter Billy Bragg, but if you mention the likes of Lead Belly, Bob Dylan, and Woody Guthrie, then you have a better understanding of his topical songs and radical voice. Bragg was the inaugural guest for MTSU's Americana Music Series, September 19th. Music of any kind has the ability to bring people together with a, with a common purpose and take you into that place and you realize that there are other people in your town, in your college, uh, in your city that feel strongly about this. But you get a call that says we have some lyrics that yeah. Woody's written, do you want to set the music to Yeah. It was, it was a kind of strange experience. Nora Guffrey, Woody's daughter, um, began archiving her father's uh, uh, work um, in the, in the uh, 1990s. and. Uh, going through boxes that had been at the family house, uh, came across lyrics that Woody wrote. Now, Woody only recorded 10% uh, of the songs he wrote, and he still has many, many things to tell us. And, and Nora Guthrie was looking for someone to come in and, and write some new tunes so that these lyrics could be heard. You know, I, I see Woody Guthrie against the backdrop of American 20th century culture with Steinbeck and with, um, with Lead Belly and, you know, hanging out somewhere, Woody, smack dab in the middle between Walt Whitman and Bob Dylan. Together we made, uh, we recorded about 50 songs. The people from Liverpool, we call them Scousers. It's a sort of nickname. So I wrote this song called um, Scousers Never Bite a Sun. Someone's hiding in the bushes with a telephoto lens While their editor assures them the means justifies the end Cause they only hunt celebrities It's all a bit of fun But the Scousers never buy the sun No one comes out looking good When all is said and done But the Scousers never buy the sun On September 11th, archaeologist and author Dr. Tony Pollard delivered a lecture on the 1746 battlefield site in northern Scotland at the Battle of Culloden. If you had a time machine and you could travel back, it would be a pretty exciting time to live in Scotland at this point. We're looking at a period where we're seeing an upsurge in media, print media, drawn media, maps, newspapers, magazines. And these are reporting events almost as they are happening. And that is the battlefield as you would have seen it prior to 2005. Now what I wanted to do on the back of this was to go in and very carefully do an evaluation excavation of this location to verify the fact that the graves were there, see what sort of form they took, what sort of condition the bodies were in, not to remove them, but simply so that that site could be managed and it could be marked appropriately. I haven't been allowed to carry out that work because it's seen as too sensitive, too politically sensitive to actually go in there and mark the location where British Army soldiers are buried because they are regarded as the butchers of the field. MTSU alumna Julie Annabas designed a Diet Coke t-shirt logo that took first place in the Diet Coke Young Designer Challenge. One of the judges called it a refreshing take on the classic white tea that perfectly captures the energy and boost that Diet Coke provides. Bass is a 2002 graduate of MTSU's textiles, merchandising, and design program. She defeated 20 other semifinalists to capture top honors. Her design also captured the popular vote of more than 135,000 votes submitted online. In addition to winning the grand prize of $10,000, her design is being sold on t-shirts at Target stores nationwide. Another MTSU alumna is trying to establish a scholarship in the memory of a fallen classmate. The Shanda Carney Fanning Aviation Memorial Scholarship will honor the Shelbyville, Tennessee native who was one of two pilots killed August 14th when their UPS airplane crashed in Birmingham, Alabama. Fanning's best friend, Whitney Dix, wants to keep Shanda's memory alive by raising $25,000 to endow a memorial scholarship being managed by the MTSU Development and Foundation Office. 
Fanning earned her Aerospace Administration degree from MTSU in 1999. She was 37. If you would like to contribute, visit mtsu.edu Fanning Scholarship. If you're like most, you likely never have heard of the term megatronics, but it's a big deal for MTSU's engineering technology program. In fact, MTSU's faculty are calling it a game changer that takes the university's engineering technology department to the next level. Randy Weiler talked to coordinators of the program to explain what mechatronics engineering is all about. A mechatronics is the blending of mechanical engineering and electronics. It has to do with robotics and automated equipment. Uh, one way to look at it is it's about one-fourth mechanical engineering, about one-fourth computer engineering, about one-fourth electrical engineering, and about one-fourth systems integration and design for all these robotic and automated systems. So it raises MTSU up to a true engineering school because this is an engineering degree and now you can potentially see them branch out into other types of engine, true engineering degrees, industrial engineering, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering. And so it really opens the floodgates, quite honestly, to, to what MTSU can provide in the future to, to this uh, group of students. We've uh, partnered with Motlow College since 2011 on the mechatronics program, and we're very excited that MTSU is now getting involved with the next level. It really affords our students a, another opportunity to uh, extend their education, uh, to continue with their education in mechatronics. We have several students that are graduating with a two-year degree in mechatronics technology, and now that MTSU has this uh, program, it affords them the opportunity uh, to go ahead and obtain a four-year degree in mechatronics engineering and to go out in the workplace as an engineer. For more information about the mechatronics program, email Dr. Ahad Nassab at ahad.nassab at mtsu.edu or call 615-898-2052. Are you true blue? Do you bleed blue? Then get ready to show your true blue spirit October 21st through the 23rd as MTSU fans and supporters once again roll up their sleeves for the American Red Cross. You can make appointments online at redcrossblood.org. Just click the blue Enter Sponsor Code box in the middle of the Red Cross page. Then enter MTSU 19 to register and make an appointment. On October 21st through October 23rd, donations will be received at the MTSU Rec Center on Blue Raider Drive. Reserved parking will be available for blood donors. Walk-in donors are welcome, but the process will be speedier by making advance appointments. Again, for more information, go to MTSU News dot com slash bleed blue 2013. Well, the goal was to pack 2017 healthy snacks for kids to match the year MTSU freshmen will graduate. But the freshman day of service surpassed that goal by almost 500 packs with 2,513. It was all part of a day of giving back to the community through United Way. So just take that and then just make your way to each station. Get one granola bar, one apple sauce, or fruit snack or something like that. You guys should still be able to get t-shirts because the United Way donated them for us this year. So, good deal. Today is freshman day of service, so the whole entire class of 2017, we're making snack packs for local students in the Rutherford County community. Um, they're healthy snack packs for them. So, each of the freshmen are going around all over the Student Union Ballroom and packing healthy snacks in there for them and writing a sweet note from the class of 2017 and then helping us reach our goal of 2017 because that's the year they graduate. I'm the philanthropic coordinator, so I plan freshman day of service as well as um, the big event for MTSU and blood drives. But um, this is our first year to have freshman day of service here um, in this atmosphere at MTSU. So we've got um, we partnered with United Way as well as Cecil. Okay. I work for SGA, so all three of us have come together to make this event happen. Our goal is 2017 snack packs, 2017 because that's the year that the freshmen at MTSU will be graduating. So that's our goal and I feel like we're going to surpass our goal and I'm really excited about it. Oh, uh, we get easy. them granola bars, fruit, small lunches, everything, and put it in the bag and write a little note to the kids. I'm going to say all day maybe. This is pretty fun too. Yeah, it's fun. They're it's jamming working. in here. Yeah. How many of you got? I did 10 as well. Yeah. 
I like the process. It's pretty easy, and I don't mind helping. I love helping, so I enjoy it a lot. My friend also, she told me about it, so I was like, okay, I wouldn't mind doing it. So I'm here today. Thank you so Thank much. You. It'll be on YouTube. Okay. Support Blue Raiders. And we were, when we were seeing people every day, over and over and over and over again, that's when you really kind of learn who, who was grateful for you know the things we were doing there and who really didn't. I am True Blue. As a member of this diverse community, I'm a valuable contributor to its progress and success. I'm engaged in the life of this community. I'm a recipient and a giver. I am a listener and a speaker. I am honest in word and deed. I'm committed to reason, not violence. I am a learner. Now and forever. I am a Blue Raider. I am a Blue Raider. I'm a Blue Raider. True Blue. Being True Blue is working to enhance our community. My name is Kobe Sherlock, and I am True Blue. At Middle Tennessee State University, we are devoted to student success. We offer the advantages of a major comprehensive university with the care and attention found at a small college. We are a community that believes in learning, growth, and service. We hold these values dear, and there's a simple phrase that conveys them. I am True Blue. I am True Blue. I am True Blue. Being True Blue is embracing unique perspectives. My name is Iris Montes, and I am True Blue. At Middle Tennessee State University, music majors receive a world-class education from a renowned faculty. Students experience first-chair instruction no matter their instrument. Our graduates go on to share their gifts on stages worldwide and instruct the next generation of musicians, never forgetting that they found their forte at Middle Tennessee. This is just one community among many. Explore all that MTSU has to offer. Devoted to student success, Middle Tennessee State University. This black and white photo of American soldiers walking through a village in Afghanistan wasn't captured by an AP photographer. It is the work of a U.S. Army veteran. Afghanistan, through the eyes of a soldier, is an exhibit of photographs captured by MTSU junior marketing major Duran Bunch. In this month's cover story, I sat down with Bunch to talk to the Nashville native about his experience in a foreign land fighting the Taliban. Basically, the, the whole concept of the, you know, of, of the gallery was to give people an idea um, of what soldiers see every day over there, kind of what they what we see when we're out on missions. Uh, I just really wanted to um, allow people back home to see the war from the perspective of a soldier. Everyone back home, the only thing they see with the war in Afghanistan is what they see on the news, what they read in the papers, and all that stuff is from the perspective of the media, but you know, it's still not from the perspective of a soldier. All the photographs that I took, I was out on missions. Like, and my job wasn't to be a photographer. I just had the camera with me, and I was snapping photos when I got a chance here and there. I made a big point not to edit any of the photographs and not to crop them. You know, I wanted people to see exactly what I saw. When people see the photographs in the gallery, that's exactly what I saw um, when I was there. There is, I didn't, I didn't alter the photos. H, I paid like, I don't know, 110 bucks for it. It was a cheap camera, but it was durable. It was a Pentax. There's a certain quality with film you just cannot get with digital. Um, and that's why, you know, that's why I decided to use it. But it was Kodak Tri-X 400 film. It's a black and white film. It's very grainy. Um, that's what I decided to use uh, because Afghanistan's a pretty grainy place. I would have uh, a new roll of film in the camera and I'd carry two more with me whenever we'd go somewhere. In my body armor, I had a, a bunch of pouches and I just kind of kept it in one of my side pouches in my body armor. And I would take it out and take a photograph and then just put it back in there so it's not in my way. Helmet cam, that's a different story because all I had to do to turn it on was it had a switch on it and it's boom, hit the switch really quick. So it just took a second to turn that on. There was actually a lot of really cool photographs I could have gotten, but I couldn't because I had to either, you know, I had to return fire or do my job. I couldn't worry about pulling my camera out and taking photos. There was actually a lot of cool photos I could have gotten that I didn't get to. 
So there were some times in the video that you'll see where there's some firefights where I got to have the camera on. And then there's some instances where I didn't, you know, we were getting shot at and I was like, I'm not gonna worry about turning my helmet cam on. Uh, whenever we took contact there, you're not gonna see where you're getting shot at from. I mean, the, the Taliban, they aren't stupid. They know that if they stand out in open ground and fire at us where we can see them, they're, they're most likely gonna get killed. A big part of what we were doing over there is trying to, um, I guess, kind of win the hearts and minds of the, of the villagers and the local nationals because uh, ultimately, you know, if, if the local populace isn't on your side, you're, you're just gonna sit there spinning your tires. You're not gonna, you're not gonna go anywhere. Dealing with the local populace and kind of becoming part of their community was a really big deal. We just made it a big, uh, big priority to uh, integrate ourselves into their community as much as possible. I attend their weekly shuras, which are basically meetings of the town elders. Ask them what they were having problems with, what they needed help with, how we could help them. Uh, because, you know, ultimately, you know, a big part of, uh, of having a s successful mission in Afghanistan is, you know, having the cooperation of of the, the local populace. That's one of the good qualities about a lot of the people over there. They're very, you know, I guess they're very forgiving. Their philosophy is, you know, they always say inshallah, which means God willing. That means, you know, if it's meant to happen, then it'll happen. A lot of the times, you know, when we'd ask, you know, what do you feel about, you know, how do you feel about U.S. forces and coalition forces being here? Oh, well, you know, we're, we're so happy, but, you know, is that them just telling us what we want to hear? When we kind of lived in villages and lived in communities and kind of started integrating and becoming kind of part of the community, and we were, when we were seeing people every day over and over and over and over again, that's when you really kind of learn who is, who, who is grateful for you know the things we were doing there and who really didn't, who really didn't care for it. You had to build trust. I guess. Exactly, it's all about trust. You're not going to build trust with just you know, you, it, it takes time, especially there. They've been invaded by, you know. It goes all the way back to Alexander the Great, Genghis Khan, Russia. Those people have been, you know, invaded so many times and at war so long. In order to build trust with them, it really takes a lot. I'm in the PSYOP unit, so we work in really small teams. And uh, we, I was on a three-man team. It was uh, myself, Sergeant Parks, and then Sergeant Cook. I knew for sure that he didn't mind me taking his photograph, so that's why I took his photograph the most. You know, whenever I saw kind of a cool little moment, you know, I'd just snap his, I'd snap his photograph because. I knew that he didn't care. That was after a really long day. Uh, that was uh, we were uh, we were on a mission that day, and we had been we had been rucking around for about 12 hours, and that was, we finally made it to our destination, and everybody was just kind of wiped out. You've been on a mission all day, walking around all day with 110, 120 pounds of gear on. You're tired. Everybody's just kind of relaxing, you know, taking a break. And there's a photo where you're having. You described it. You're having a meeting with the locals, and there's a son, a young son, sitting there with his father, mm -hmm. and the father's drinking something. Chai, chai tea. They're they're really big on you know when, when whenever we would have um, meetings and go to shuras and stuff, they're really big on serving chai. You know that's the thing. When they have meetings, they're always sitting there, you know, drinking chai, and they always serve offer chai to guests. So like we were guests, so they would always offer us chai. At that time, we were looking for a uh, on high high value target. Giving them wanted posters basically and a large popu a large percentage of the population can't read so we had our interpreter there kind of describing to them what the wanted poster said and who it was we were looking for, if they had seen him. It's, it's kind of difficult to take a bad picture in Afghanistan because everything's interesting. I mean, you, know, you can take a picture of something here you know that would be wouldn't really be that interesting at all but there it's super interesting because of the way they live is so much different than here. I'm really surprised it turned out so well because I really had no experience in photography whatsoever other than um, all the photographers that I had worked with. But as far as taking photographs myself, I had pretty much no experience. For more information on future exhibits at MTSU's Todd Art Gallery, visit mtsu.edu slash art. We'll be right back. We started in 1911 with a clear mission to train Tennessee's best teachers. For the last 100 years, Middle Tennessee State University has carried out that mission and so much more. Nationally recognized as an affordable quality university, the number one choice of undergraduates in Tennessee. As we celebrate our centennial, we look with pride at the past. We look forward to the future. Check out why we're Tennessee's best. 
Being true blue is making the world a safer place. My name is Sam Willie, and I am true blue. Would you like to prepare students for the future and carry on the legacy of your favorite teachers? Middle Tennessee State University education students explore proven instructional methods and discover innovative tools and approaches that are changing the way children learn. Our graduates' extensive student teaching experience makes them highly sought after by schools throughout the Southeast. This is just one community among many. Explore all that MTSU has to offer. Devoted to student success, Middle Tennessee State University. Being true blue is helping others to reach their potential. My name is Daryl Freeman and I am true blue. The world is changing every day, but the skills that matter will never change. The abilities to create, to think critically, to influence and inspire. Alongside a premier faculty and award-winning peers, broaden your world at the College of Liberal Arts at Middle Tennessee State University. The Blue Raiders got off to a 3-2 start in September, defeating Western Carolina on opening day and overcoming a tight game with Memphis to win 17-15. Cody Clark's 40-yard field goal with less than two minutes left in the game made the difference. By one. Big kick coming from the right hash. Here's the kick. It's up, and the kick by Cody Clark good. is good. You know, I missed the one in, earlier in the game. It was like a chip shot. And uh, you should, you sure you missed it? We saw the replay. I, yeah, I thought it was good too. We all thought it was good, but unfortunately, you know, I got to put, it, I got to make it easier on the referees. Put it down the middle. But uh, yeah, I was kind of had to kick that one to the side. And uh, you know, I just got out there. You know, Josh was talking to me. My older Josh was talking to me and Blaine. You know, he had a great snap. Josh got the ball down, and I just kept my head down and swung through it. It took overtime on the road, but MTSU showed toughness in defeating Florida Atlantic 42-35 to take the Blue Raiders' first Conference USA game. In overtime, Logan Kilgore found Kyle Griswold for a 19-yard TD pass to notch the win. You know, you hear me say it all the time. I talk about physical and mental toughness. Uh, I thought we displayed that uh, as well as any team I've ever been a part of. You know, it's a the, the mental toughness, like you said, that, you know, you look like you got a little cushion there and then here they come back and score. You know, the mental toughness of the offense to, to come back and get another one. The mental toughness of the defense to finally rise up and get a stop. So uh, the, the competitive spirit, how hard they played and competed, it, it makes you proud as a coach to watch. Cause they... With the victory over FAU, the Blue Raiders moved to 3-1 and one for the second consecutive season and the first time in back-to-back -back years since 1991. For tickets, call the Blue Raider ticket office at 1-888-YES-MTSU. That's it for this edition of Out of the Blue. For more information on MTSU News, be sure to go to mtsunews.com. Until next time, stay true blue.